Hi. Um, where do I start with this one? Um, I've, I've recorded a little bit anyway uh, that I was going to show, and I'm going to show it just after this little brief chat, really. Um, oh, life. Um, I've been away for quite a bit, as most people would know. Um, all sorts of reasons for that. Um, recently, you know, life takes a different turn, doesn't it? And things happen in your life, and uh, sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse. Um, but uh, what you got to do is uh, sort it out. And if you think it's for the worse, then that's it. Um, so, listen, I'm back. Um, Nothing is going to interfere with my life anymore, ever again, and stand in the way of what I've been doing. Uh, and that's what tends to happen, things in your life get in the way, don't they? So, um, not anymore, I'm glad to say. Carbonator is back here, and we're going to do some stuff. Uh, so, forgetting all that rubbish now, um, that is... I'm sure some of you will recognise it. Uh, the piece of carbon, or what should we call it? Well, carbon. It, it is carbon. Uh, that Dan was using in Australia. I was quite intrigued with his uh, little battery there. Uh, and the results that he got. I was quite intrigued uh, about this. You know, uh, phenomenal results. We know that. Uh, we can't argue with that. Um, so, excuse me. I did contact Dan. And said, you know, uh, listen, what I'd like to do is replicate your cell. Um, I've replicated loads of things that other people have done, you know, uh, KREX, RMS, uh, Martin, Solar Hope, um, you know, and anyone else that I can't think of, sorry. Uh, but yeah, you know, I've, I've done all of that and I've, I've, I've had a word with Dan and said that, you know, I'm going to test this uh, with due credit to Dan, obviously. So <clears throat> that's what's on the bench at the moment. Now it's not fully replicated because um, what Dan did was fired these things for uh, with his feather carbons and some urea uh, for nitrogen uh, grouping uh, and what I've got to do is kind of follow what Dan did um, to an extent although I wouldn't use myself urea for uh, the nitrogen but I'm going to use urea because, I'm, I'll, like I say, I want to replicate what Dan did. Uh, and these, I do believe, are exactly the same pieces of carbon um, that, that he uses in that, in that battery uh, that he's shown us recently. So, um, I'm starting at the, the beginning at the moment without doing anything to that. And I'll test that on its own, the way Dan's done it. Um, and if I don't get results, then I'll, uh, I'm guessing I'm going to have to go out and buy some more feathers. Uh, I did do some feather carbon, but it was in one of those tubs that, that, you know, all my carbons went in the bin, if you remember, for the reasons that I said. So, a bit of contamination. So, um, that's about it really for this. Uh, I'll let you know what the re initial results are, and then I'll show you... Uh, once I've fired these things for a, a long time, 24 hours I think, uh, with these feather carbons and urea uh, at 200 degrees, that's what Dan did. So I'll be doing that. Um, it's a long time, 24 hours, isn't it? But, you know, uh, what's got to be done has got to be done. But for me, personally, the intriguing part was this stuff. Uh, massive surface area on that. Um, I'm going to try this as well, uh, not as a chunk like that. It's it's fairly conductive um, on its own. Just just out of the uh, out of the box, and I've literally got. <laughs> I I can only buy ten kilos. I couldn't buy any less, but you know I've just got a massive box full of this stuff. You know. <laughs> 10 kilos of it so uh, what I'm going to do as well is, is crush that stuff up uh, and, and try and utilize it as
the conductive uh, surface or the electrode because that's what Dan used that as was his electrode wasn't it so you know we'll see um, oh I've got the meter in my hand I was gonna try and show you the conductivity which never works does it you know you need three hands don't you but we'll give it a go um, Yes, yeah, I'm 200 ohms. There's absolutely nothing in that that piece. No, yeah. don't quite know what's going on there. That's rubbish. But this is the same with anything. If you pick up, you know, barbecue briquettes and you know, activated charcoal, and you see that one there is like 150 ohms. But if you can see that. You know, the piece I've got there, I think was about four ohms, but we can obviously work on it to get the resistance down, you know, um, I can fire it in the kiln, uh, well actually I think Dan did fire those in the kiln for two hours at 950 degrees, which is my preferred method in the kiln, two hours, 950 degrees, I've said that many times in the past, so what I'm going to do is leave it there, uh, you know what's going on, um, I will show, show the results, I'm ever so sorry that I've been away, uh, again, even when I said before, I'm back, and life, you know, but um, I'm back. Right, that was pretty crappy, that other piece, wasn't it? I've got another one there, look. There's the leads, there's the meter. 8.5 ohms, I think it says. Uh, even 7.8. Oops, the light's gone out. Even 7.8, look, see? Uh, 8 ohms. So, it, it does vary. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But the thing you've got to do, like I said, is you've got to fire it in the kiln and make the whole thing conductive and that's all there is to it uh, and what you need to achieve obviously is below 1 ohm if you can so and I've always managed that with all of my carbons anyway uh, you know 950 C 2 hours <laughs> it just does it and that's all there is to it so there's lots and lots of stuff I've got to do um, even even um, the zinc hexacyanoferrite, I have not yet, because I've been <laughs> doing other things, um, I have not yet, and I would have obviously, uh, put this in the kiln to see if we can make it conductive, I don't know if we can, but you know, it's, it's the obvious path isn't it, you know, that's the route to take, and if you don't try, you don't get, so that's it. Um, the other important thing was, uh, I forgot to mention when I was talking about Dan and what is achieved, uh, which is a some achievement really, you know, you can't knock it. Uh, he ran that cell for four hours, I do believe, at 100 milliamps. Now, I don't really think Dan appreciates what he's got there, because that is a, four, uh, a 400 milliamp hour battery. That's nearly half an amp. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm not going to talk about what I've done in the past and what I'm doing now and what I've achieved, but if that's all to come. That, for Dan, is actually brilliant. <laughs> I don't think, like I've just said, he actually knows what he's got, but, you know, I've just told him. Um, a, a 400 milliamp power so if it ran for four hours at 100 milliamps it should run for an hour at 400 milliamps that's an achievement i tell you um i won't <laughs> i shouldn't say this but i'm gonna uh i shouldn't really 
how do, how do I say this so you all understand um, why I don't show some stuff? <clears throat> um, recently, RMS has shown us that plate uh, that he, I think it was six inches by six inches by uh, six millimeters thick, and he actually said that um, it was a 10 amp power plate or cell uh, and he rated the battery with all of the other cells you know up to the, the 12 volts at something like 80 amp hours do you know what <laughs> that is something else isn't it that is something else so what I'm trying to say is uh, I don't want to show some of the stuff that I've done and the power ratings and all the rest of it until I've got somewhere near that <laughs> uh, that's just me you know I've always been 16 steps behind RMS anyway uh, uh, sometimes two steps uh, but for the most part you know the guy is brilliant we know that and he's a very clever chemist we know that I'm not you know uh, I'm just an average Joe um, Oh, must stop doing that. Uh, yeah, defensive posture apparently. Don't know why. Uh, but anyways, sidetracked again. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the reason why you don't see me uh, these days um, showing that kind of stuff is because I want to make it better first, and I want to make it as good as I can first. So that's the reason. Now you know. Um, I'll leave it at that now because I'm doing too much of that again uh, and really what you want to see is action isn't it you know and stuff like that but <coughs> uh, this is still on charge I'm going to charge it for I think Dan charged this for three hours oh forgot to set my timer getting old um, so that's it Okay, so <coughs> excuse me. Uh, that's the the cell there, and what I've done, uh, I've just painted some material uh, on the anode and some on the cathode. Um, so that's how I've done it. Uh, there's not a lot of material on there, to be honest. Um, but what I wanted to do, um, this is on charge at the moment. It's on its first charge. It's still drawing 80 milliamps. Um, I. One of the things that I'm back to doing now is a short circuit test because uh, whatever battery I build, um, I obviously, I've always said I want it to have that initial grunt, you know, like a, a lead acid car battery type thing, you know, where you've got initial grunt if you need it. So that's the whole reason for the short circuit test, just to see. It's no real indication of the you know the battery power or energy levels or anything like that storage capabilities but it's it's an indication if you like so what I'm going to do that's set on 10 amps and I'm just hoping now uh, because this is like I say experimental and the first one I've built so uh, I'm gonna turn off the charger and I'm gonna do a short circuit test and see what we've got well it peaked at 1.68 amps then so that's pretty good I like that um, and that's it, 1.1 amps there. Look, one amp. So yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna push it. Um, now I've just put the charger back on, and it's charging at. Two, well, it was 270 milliamps. It's 170, 160 now. So yeah. Um, sorry about the uh, the camera wobble. I've got my camera on a extended arm at the moment. Um, yeah, who knows, let's see. Okay, um, whether I show some more with this battery or not, just in this video, I don't really know, but I wanted to say a couple of other things anyway. Um, it's, it's got some potential, so uh, I know that. 
you know, for the amount of material that's on there to give that sort of a, a short circuit, I know there's potential in it. So I just need to balance everything out now. Um, and go again and, and do a better construction, a better design on the construction. So that's that. Uh, if you look at recent videos by uh, K-Rex, where he did a zinc hexacyanophoric battery, uh, the reason for, I actually did that and tried and tested it and it, it, it works. What he showed actually works. Uh, but of course, he was using um, this carbon cloth stuff, which is very conductive, and he impregnated that with uh, his uh, his blend, his mix of graphite and carbon black and uh, zinc hexacyanoferrate um, on the cathode or positive, because some people don't agree with me that the positive is the cathode, so I'll say both. Like Pete. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's that. That's what he did. Now, if you look at uh, Dan P, that's his um, that's his YouTube name, Dan P, and what he's done recently, uh, he's finally got there and he's doing some good things. Uh, whether he knows what he's got and why he's got it, I don't know. We'll see. But. Again, it, it, it involves, well, basically that, a massive surface area is what it involves, uh, a highly porous, massive surface area. Now, if I just roll this up, you know, Dan's used a really thick charcoal br briquette, I think he said it was. Uh, I saw his, his last video and it, I was quite impressed, actually. Um, so, you know head over to Dan's site if you don't know who he is. He's in Australia. Uh, have a look at what he's done. Uh, and it's pretty impressive actually, you know. So uh, then you can sort of figure out why. k has got that result and Dan got his result. Uh, and I'll mention one other person. Good old RMS. Why his plates uh, are so powerful. Now, we know in terms of milliwatt hours and all that sort of gubbins and nonsense, it's not, uh, it's not high up, it's not up there. But if you consider, right, just consider this, that small 6x6, six six, I think it was, plate that Robert showed us, uh, which is the anode and the cathode sandwiched together. He called it a 10 amp power plate or a 10 amp power cell. You think about that and then, you know, look at what I've just said about Dan, what he's done and what K-Rex did, but then a small piece of this, this carbon cloth um, and you start to get some idea of uh, what's going on. Now, I do know of someone else that has done a similar thing. Uh, Martin from Solar Hope uh, and got a good result. Uh, so if you head over to his channel and have a look at that as well, you start to get, you start to form an idea. I'm not going to spill all the beans here now on my video. You know, head over, have a look, and see what you think. That's the way to do it. Um, because I can't verbally repeat everything I saw because I can't remember all of it. You know, it's just the gist of it. So anyway, Dan, well done, mate. Okay, so <clears throat> that was a little taster there, that short circuit. Uh, of that. It was a tiny battery uh, made up of something I'm not going to tell you about just yet until I've completed the cycle, make sure it works properly and all the rest of it. But recently, um, Rob's introduced us all to zinc hexacyanoferrate. Um, the world of Prussian blue analogues. Uh, there's a whole host of papers out there. There's, there are hundreds of papers on this subject. So what I don't want anyone to do is question me on it. Just Google it. Google something like zinc hexacyanoferrate electrodes. There are hundreds of papers. Um, but what I wanted to sort of talk about was, um, I mean, Prussian blue. There's a jar of it there, look. Prussian blue. Um, in fact, 
I did put some on a bit of paper earlier on. I'll put some more on there like that. And there it is. Prussian blue. Uh, easily synthesised in the lab. Um, I've got a jar there. And I've got a jar there. And we just do that. And there's your Prussian blue. Now what was in there? Um, this is a very weak solution of um, ferric chloride. I was going to get them on a ferric chloride, but I won't. Uh, it's just a weak solution of ferric chloride. And in the other jar is... Let's see. No, we're not talking about potassium ferrocyanide, that red stuff that you get in the kit from Rob, um, which is K3. Uh, you need this stuff, which is K2, which is actually, it says, potassium hexacyanoferrate. But we've got a 2. Okay, if you can see that. There is a 2 there. Yeah, just on the corner there. So, that's the stuff you need. Uh, not the other one. Um, I mean, this is this potassium ferrocyanide is is the stuff that you actually use to make your zinc hexacyanoferrate. Although that one says hexacyanoferrate as well, but we've got K two and K three, so that makes your Prussian blue uh, the K two. So there we go. Um, I'll do that again. That's settled down to the bottom nicely. Look. Russian blue. It's a whole new world. I mean, that this stuff has been around chemistry labs for eons, uh, and it's kind of a dye, uh, for want of a better word. Um, and it's used for myriads of things in chemistry, uh, in chemistry labs. Recently, just found it's. I'd say recently. I, I mean, you know, the last few years, uh, it's found its way into batteries. Um, as a hexacyanoferrate, um, zinc hexacyanoferrate, but I don't want to talk about zinc hexacyanoferrate, I want to talk about metal hexacyanoferrates because again there's a whole host of papers out there. Uh, I did know about this stuff, I mentioned it in an earlier video uh, before Rob came out with it because uh, I mentioned at the time that I was, what was I dealing with? Um, I'll tell you when it comes to me. Um, can't remember now. But anyways, uh, metal hexacyanoferrates. There we've got nickel. And there we've got, they're just settling out by the way, copper. So that's nickel hexacyanoferrate, copper hexacyanoferrate. And my favourite at the moment, and I've got a battery on charge now, I only made a little bit because I wasn't certain, but it's got a nice chocolatey brown colour down there, lovely chocolatey brown, manganese hexacyanoferrate. So there's a whole new world out there that you can all explore doesn't have to be zinc. Um, in fact, that battery that I showed the short circuit with, that was copper hexacyanoferrate. Um, so, you know, it's all out there, guys. Uh, don't just stick to the zinc. You can go for anything. Any metal hexacyanoferrate. Uh, and test test them all. You know, you don't have to test them all, obviously. You, you know, you can pick one and trial it. Pick another one and trial it, which I've been doing for some time now. Um, cool. I wish I could think of what I was, do I was talking about earlier on. Um, titanium dioxide. <laughs> yeah. uh, nanotubes in particular, uh, which is what I was pursuing at the time. Um, but the difficulty in manufacturing that 
compared to the difficulty in manufacturing any of this. They are worlds apart. This uh, hexacyanoferrate uh, world uh, is very energy friendly. You know, there are no, there's, there's no nastiness to it with acids and stuff like that, which I had to use with the, uh, the, the nanotube situation with the um, titanium dioxide. So I've kind of shelved that for now. Um, and I'm going to pursue all of this. I'm going to make up a lot of each one of these. Um, Dan, for instance, commented, ah, oh, chat about Dan. Uh, <laughs> how long did it take, take you to make all that zinc hexacyanoferrate? Uh, quite a while, you know, but I want to fill that jar eventually. Uh, and I've got several other jars of the same jar size. All of these, I want to fill these jars with each one of these metal hexacyanoferrates and then test each one once I've got the jars filled. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Um, and that's where I'm going to be for a while. Uh, Dan, fantastic results. Um, massive surface area on that carbon, obviously. Uh, but I'm really pleased for Dan. Um, you know, and he's, 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 he seems to be coming out of himself as well. He's got more of a, um, what's the word? Confidence about his videos now and stuff like that. It shows in his new videos. And I'm really, really pleased for Dan. But anyways, um, that's about it for now, really. Can't think of a lot more to say. Just wanted to show you some of this stuff and to show you that you're not stuck with zinc hexacyanoferrate. There, there's a myriad of, you know, different ones that you can pick and choose from. Um, and you'd be amazed at, you know, what's out there uh, paper-wise to read uh, on the internet. And it's not difficult to get. You know, there's a lot of PDFs out there. Just download the PDFs like I do uh, and read the damn things. So that's it. Another short video. See you in a bit. Be good. No, sorry, can't leave it there. Since recording that, um, <coughs> excuse me, that was going to be the short video. However, since then, uh, I've mentioned the manganese uh, hexacyanoferrate. Um, and I'm making a lot more. That's a new batch just settling out. Um, and I should probably make... Uh, I wouldn't say another 10 batches of, of that particular size um, beaker. You know, it's going to be that size beaker. Uh, because I want a lot of it. Now, I've tested it. And I tell you what. <laughs> you got to do it. You've just got to try it. Uh, manganese. Um, zinc batteries, manganese. Uh, all you've got to do, it's it's quite simple. There's nothing sort of uh, majorly different to your zinc hexacyanoferrate, if that's what you're making. All you've got to do <coughs> is get yourself some of this stuff, which is uh, manganese sulfate. Uh, <coughs> and you, <coughs> excuse me, and you, you simply replace the, um, the zinc sulfate solution with your manganese sulfate uh, solution so it's as easy as that uh, there's no difference the same with copper sulfate um, nickel sulfate uh, it's all the same so and it's <coughs> excuse me honestly guys have a go at this um, you know don't just stick to zinc hexacyanoferrate you don't have to uh, there's so much to try and so much to choose from. Um, I'm sticking with sort of four or five at the minute um, with another possible 20 that I want to try. Um, still got to do... Uh, Martin from Solar Hope uh, sent me a paper on uh, this stuff. And I, because I requested on the, one of my other videos, uh, you know, if, if anyone sort of sees any papers on how to how to uh, convert this back to a, a metal salt, uh, I've got a feeling though, um, and it, and it was a sulfuric acid uh, method, um, a weak solution of sulfuric acid, 
but uh, looking at this stuff on the periodic table, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how it's all going to pan out, but um, we shall see. Uh, I haven't done it yet, so it, it's still, uh, what is it? Well, yeah, cerium oxide, you know, so I want the metal salt. Um, well, I want a sulphate of that uh, to try that as a hexacyanoferrate. So that's on the cards, but it's time, you know. Um, people like me, we've got daytime jobs, um, and that's all there is to it, you know. Oh, it's just a time thing. But it will happen, there's no two ways about that. Um, but uh, try this stuff, just try it, that's all I can say. Manganese hexacyanoferrate, it's a good one to start with, trust me on that. Now I'm done. Okay, uh, I've been recording this one over a, a few days now. Um, what time is it? It is ten past three. It is Sunday, the I don't know something of February. I don't really care. Um, this uh, cell that I've been talking about of Dan's that I was going to replicate. I told you what I was going to do, which was just try the uh, the carbon as it is first, and then move on to what Dan did with the feathers and the urea and all that sort of stuff. But I've left this running now. Uh, sorry, charging for, I think it was 59, about 50 something minutes. Um, I charged it at 2.2 volts, same as Dan did. I've got a piece of copper wire around the top instead of that big piece of copper that Dan had got. Uh, initially I couldn't get any voltage out of it but <laughs> the wire was too loose so I've, I've put a, this big clamp around it now. So I've put it on discharge at 50 milliamps uh, and it's still running at the moment. Uh, I'll show you some results at the end of this anyway. It's been going for 25 minutes and uh, it's at 0.7 of a volt and it's been like that for quite some time. So the voltage dipped initially, I'll do it this way shall I, so you can see the graph. The voltage dipped initially and it's kind of a, a linear, linearish line now, so that's what we've got. Uh, 22 milliamp hours, 19 milliwatt hours at the moment, so I'll just see where it goes, just leave it discharging, 50 milliamps. I'm going to get that camera now and put it down there and show you what we've got so far, so you know I'm telling the truth. Um, the, the copper, uh, the initial feeling I had with Dan, because I, I passed a comment on to him, was that you're going to get electrolyte creepage up this carbon. Let's find a piece of carbon. That was the stuff I've shown you already. Um, and what you get with this piece of copper wire or copper or you know Dan uses stainless steel now perhaps I'll get some stainless steel wiring um, you get creepage electrolyte creepage up the carbon and I'm just looking at this cell I'll, I'll show you it and it, it is actually wet right to the top that was my initial fear with Dan's original cell but then I commented on the video <laughs> maybe you've got electrolyte creepage and some interaction from the copper um, so you've kind of got a galvanic cell there, for want of a better term. Uh, having said that, he then changed it to stainless steel throughout the video, and I felt a right idiot actually saying something beforehand and not watching it all the way through. We've all done it, you know, we've all done it, so it's just one of those things, isn't it? Um, so, I'll stop doing that. Um, it's a new day, uh, and I'll show you this. Okay, so you've all heard of the Joe cell, I'm certain of that, this I'm going to call the Dan cell. So there it is, um, it's just sitting in electrolyte basically, it's uh, for want of a better word a wet cell, or two words I should say. So as you can see that copper is not 
sitting in the electrolyte but if you look at the top uh, of this carbon I can't try not to disturb things too much you know it is wet trust me it's very very wet but I just can't I'm gonna move I'm gonna disturb everything oh, I've already done it look so anyway this is uh, what we've got from this cell so far that there was something that I did when I started maneuvering it and all the rest of it so don't worry about that and if you look at that voltage um, you can see what's happening with a 50 milliamp load you see now I've just I've got this now because I've just touched that and I've just moved it again haven't I um, so it's actually gone up hasn't it you know something's gone up and knocked down uh, as I said we, we've got 21 milliwatt hours 24 milliamp hours um, let's see what we get eh? right then <clears throat> so the run time is now 1 hour 12 minutes as you can see um, 0.47 volts 50 milliamp load still um, capacity 60 milliamp hours and 43 milliwatt hours uh, don't know where this is all going to end but uh, <coughs> excuse me to be fair I just want to upload this video today just to to be doing something really um, so I'm going to do just that and I'll tell you what the initial uh, the end result was uh, some other time now that glitch there was where I moved uh, the cell so from a construction point of view uh, we can see that uh, it's not stable uh, in this form the way it is which is why I mentioned earlier on that I intend to crush up some of that material shall we say once I've fired it in the kiln and once I've got the material down to a, uh, a low resistance below one ohm obviously um, <clears throat> and then we'll kind of go again if you like uh, when I say go again I mean uh, my version of the Dan cell with the Dan materials uh, for a better construction, a more stable construction because you can see what happens <clears throat> that was just touching the damn thing you know and that went up uh, for the better not, not for the worse so you know you, you've got to be careful with the construction but anyway uh, you know that's the initial test look 50 milliamp load so pretty good and I will tell you in another video what the end result was and and the next best set of results uh, I'll try and you know make this construction a bit better um, so I'll be back yeah I know but no one ever tells me off so you know I'm doing what I want to do and I you know I, I want a cigarette and that's all there is to it um, so those results then, I mean the thing's still running, it hasn't finished yet. Uh, <clears throat> ah, Arthur, Arthur Schroeder. Uh, hope everything's okay you're in mate, um, or as good as it can be. Uh, I did say to you that what you're going through, uh, I know from experience, so my heart still goes out to you mate. Um, that's all I can say really. I hope all is well. Anyway, uh, back to this then. I'll come back. I'll come back soon. Uh, I'm, I intend to do lots and lots of videos the way I used to. Uh, that stuff getting in the way. You'd be good. Carbonator's back. <laughs>